So, um, hello, I'm Godfrey. You can find me on the internet as uh, Chen Jin Ko. You might um, have come across me on the internet as a Rails core team member, or I've, I've also been making contributions to Ember lately. And um, like Leia said, I work for a local company called Twitter. You might have heard of it. Um, I, in fact, I recently, like Leia said, I recently moved here from Canada, and Leia told me, oh, it would be great if you can do a talk at the Ember meetup because you just, you know, moved here from Canada. So I was like, okay, great, I will talk about Canada. So, <laughs> um, so I moved here from Vancouver. It's a very beautiful city. If you have not been there, you should find some time to visit Vancouver sometime. Um, this is a picture of Vancouver downtown. As you can see, we have an amazing healthcare system. So there are a lot of <laughs> five-star hospital buildings in downtown. And um, Canada is also one of the largest country in the world. As you can see, we are ranked number two right after Russia. Um, as a result, we have a lot of land. And for example, our parking lots are very wide, as you can see. <laughs> Um, if, you, if you're familiar with the parking spots here, you probably won't believe me that this car is parked, so I took another picture with another angle so you can see there's no one in there. It's actually parked there. Um, and of course, it would be pretty bad if I just showed people's license plate on the screen so I made sure I blurred it out <laughs> as you can see. Um, we also have very advanced technology. We invented the original smartphone. Um, and lately, we have been working on self-driving cars. Um, you've probably heard of it. When it comes to self-driving cars, there are a lot of moral issues involved. Because like, if a dog runs out to the road, the car, cannot, like, the car will have to decide, should I hit the dog or should I like, you know, pull to the side and maybe kill everyone in the car? Right, so <laughs> that's some very complex moral issues that programmers today have to deal with. Fortunately, we um, already have very advanced technology for dealing with accidents um, <laughs> on the road. So um, that's our <laughs> latest contribution to um, the technology, and you can expect a lot more from the Canada technology sector going forward. So that's basically all I've prepared. But today I found out, as it turns out, and player actually want me to talk about Amber. <laughs> so, um, so I've prepared a little bit about Amber as well. Um, we literally, I've been working on the thing that I'm about to tell you up until like two hours ago. The core request was just merged two hours ago. So I only have two hours to prepare this. So please forgive me if it's not very good. Um, but, OK, so the thing I want to talk to you about is fast food and beyond. So traditionally, when you think of Ember, you think of like something like this, right? Like this is Skylight, an app that we have been working on. But basically, it's like a full page app that takes over the entire page. And like it's interactive, and you transition within the same thing without having to reload and stuff. And that's great. Um, and that's how Ember 1.0 works, right? Like you basically have like a script tag on your page that loads Ember and then loads your app, and then Ember waits for DOM ready, and when DOM ready comes, it boots your app, and your app takes over the entire body usually, or maybe you can restrict it to like a, a container diff in your app, but basically it waits for DOM ready and boots the entire app, and it just takes over the experience from there. Um, that's so that's um, what you want most of the time, right? Like we're like a lot of people call it single page apps or like we call it ambitious web applications or whatever, right? But that's basically the primary use case of Ember. And basically it's like take over the DOM, we have one true app, let me do everything. I'll take control of like the URL, the DOM events and everything else. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but it turns out that 
And this is not all, like this is what you want most of the time, but this is not what you always want. So for example, in testing, it would be pretty terrible that you need to test your app and you load your script tag with your app and like you had your Q unit harness in there and you load it and boom, like your app took over the entire screen. You can't test it, right? Um, so, and obviously since the very early days, em well, Ember itself has a lot of tests, right? So Ember has to test itself, so it has to solve this problem somehow. And like later on in the one point X release series, it also add a lot more, like the ecosystem also caught onto the idea of testing. So that was a problem that needs solving. So basically you need an emergency brick to stop Ember from like, please stop, please don't take over the entire DOM. I have stuff to do. Right. And that emergency brick is at that setup for testing. You, um, if you have been doing Ember testing for a long time, you probably have typed this in your app many times. Um, if you are more recent to the ecosystem and you're using something like Ember CLI, it probably does that for you, but you have to cut it somewhere. So basically how it works is you have your script tag for Ember and you have your script tag for your app, and then at some point you call um, you call in testing mode. You call app dot for testing, and it's basically is a actually never mind. I will take over from here, and instead of waiting for DOM ready and booting the app, um, basically on before you run every test case, you would oh I have a setup function. Let me boot the app, and then append to a fixture area in the DOM, and then when the test case uh, finished, I will tear it down myself by calling app.reset. Um, again, if you have been using, um, if you have been doing this for a long time, you probably have typed off that. Um, lately, some um, advancements in the CLI ecosystem probably means that you can, um, it can hide some of these from you, but fundamentally, this is how it works. You have one true app that you can boot, and you can have one app at a time, and you can it, like you can call reset to try to put it back to um, its original state. And that works most of the time, but it's pretty difficult to pull off, as you can imagine. Like there are a lot of things that your app could be doing in between this step and this step, and having to unwind all of those things when you call reset could be error prone, to put it mildly. Um, but anyway, so that was the testing story, and that's the um, solution the Ember community have um, improvised or like have developed to solve the one scenario where you don't want the, the one true app, which is testing. And it worked out pretty, like it, there are problems, but it worked out okay for the most part. Um, and then later on, um, there came fast food. So what is fast food? So it turns out every once in a while, search engines like Google might try to um, index your sites. And if you build your app with Ember that requires JavaScript and up until somewhat recently, Google doesn't actually know how to execute JavaScript when it crawls your website. So unfortunately, that basically means you cannot return anything to Google, and Google cannot understand your sites, which is perhaps important if you're like if your news or if your blog website or if your news outlet, right? Like you might actually want people to be able to search for your stuff on search engines. Um, so what you actually want is when Google or uh, when Google um, talks to your web server and asks for uh, a page, um, instead of just returning a blank page, you actually want to somehow return the HTML content of what your page would look like if you have JavaScript enabled. Um, there are other use cases, like there are other places where this is beneficial, like if you're on a slower device, it might be good to return the render page to your phone and then wait for the JavaScript to catch up and then make it interactive. Right? But 
for now, let's focus on the SEO use case. Now, there are a lot of challenges involved with fast food. Um, like you have to somehow figure out how to run Ember in a Node.js or in, on a server side environment that isn't actually a browser, right? So we will sidestep all of those problems for now and we'll focus on a very specific part of that problem. So you could imagine if you somehow figure out how to run Ember on the server, you could do something like this. When a request come in from the browser or from, from Google or whoever, you can boot a worker, which basically makes a um, sandbox environment, like a, like a browser-like environment. And then you load Ember into a browser-like environment on the server, and you boot your app, and you render a page, extract the HTML, return it to, um, return it to the browser, or return it to Google or whoever, and then you destroy that worker. So this is obviously pretty costly because for every web request that comes in, you have to bootstrap um, a sandbox environment, load Ember, and all the things, which is presumably not very cheap. Um, you can do something a little bit better. You can, um, for example, you can pre-boot a worker and then you can load Ember into it and you can boot your app and wait for a request to come in. When a request come in, you can render result, extract the HTML, and then you can call app.reset like how we do it in test rate. You can try to reset the state of your app back to where it is. So now you can, you're ready to serve the next request that comes in without having to boot your app and load Ember, sorry. You still have to boot your app on every request, but you can avoid loading Ember and bootstrapping a browser-like sandbox environment for every request, which is roughly how um, Rails and like a lot of other um, web framework works, right? Um, but there is a problem. Um, so rendering this page might, might not be cheap. So for example, you might have to make five or six Ajax calls to get all the content to render this page and that could take perhaps like hundreds of milliseconds. And while all of that is happening, your worker cannot serve other requests. So you have like, you can, um, you would have to, if you have a lot of um, visitors to your site, you would have like a few workers or like a, a lot of workers standing by just in case there's like a lot of requests flooding in. Um, but there are actually something you can do better because we're running in JavaScript and JavaScript, like if you have ran any, like if you have written any apps, like our server-side apps in Node, then you would know that usually you won't have to do this or you don't need a large number of workers because um, JavaScript is actually pretty good at handling, like doing multiple things at the same time while the AJAX request is happening and actually you know, do some work to prepare for the next request and fire off is AJAX requests and do a lot of stuff concurrently or it feels like it's doing it concurrently. <laughs> um, so because we're running Ember in JavaScript, it feels like we can take better advantage of that instead of having to boot many workers to um, process the requests. So ideally, um, this is what you want. Basically, you would have, um, you would put a sandbox environment and you would load Ember to it and load your app into it. And for every request that comes in, you want to boot an instance and then use that instance to render. And meanwhile, you can boot many, many instances within the same worker process and serve many requests at the same time. They would just, like when one request is blocked by IO or AJAX requests, it would just use that CPU, like use the CPU time to process in a request. And it can do a lot more work with um, a lot less workers. So that's basically the goal. Um, and in Ember 1.12, um, Yehuda and Tom and Dan did a lot of work to make that happen. So basically the result is instead of having one 
thing called Ember the application. They split up into um, Ember the application and Ember, Ember the application instance. Um, you might have encountered this concept if you have been using initializers. You, in that release, you have to break your initializers into application initializers and instance initializers, and they do slightly different things. But the way to think about this is Ember that application is basically the blueprint, or since we're JavaScript programmers, it's basically the prototype of your application. And instances are well, the concrete thing you create to, um, to do your rendering and routing. Uh, in other words, um, all your application states live in the application instance, and the application itself is basically just like a, a skeleton uh, step. So that happened in Ember 1.12, but there aren't any ways that you can take advantage of that. So if, from your perspective, perhaps you're just doing a lot of work for apparently no reason because you can't actually make those application instances yourself. There's no public API for doing that. And frankly, you might not really have any reason to do that anyway because you're probably, um, if you're using Ember today, you're probably in the one true app mentality and you have you just have one app on the page. And in 1.12 and beyond, basically how it works is when on DOM ready, it will boot your app and then it will boot a default instance for you and it's all transparent. So from your perspective, um, it's basically still doing exactly the same thing. And now, the reason that this actually happened is, as I said, to prepare for fast food, which is um, a feature that is in Canary behind a feature flag. Um, what fast food did is basically they added an API called visit. So you, on your application, you can call app.visit and give a URL, the initial URL, and it will boot an application instance and navigate that instance to this particular URL and resolve a promise with that instance. Um, so this is great for fast boot. And you, if we go back to um, this slide, you will basically, you can imagine how it works. Basically, you have a worker, you load Ember, and then you wait for a request. When a request comes in, you call app.visit, whatever URL that request is for, and then it will return promise. Meanwhile, you can wait for another request to come in and you call app.visit and give a URL, and it will re return another promise. Whenever the promise re uh, resolves, you can um, finalize the re request by sending, flushing the response with the HTML. So that's great. Um, and that's basically um, the fast boot or slash application visit feature that is currently on Canary. Um, so last week, I have been working on this feature um, to add some finishing touches and hopefully we'll um, be able to finalize this for the next, like not the not the immediately, uh, not the release that's happening imminently, but the release after that. Um, so I would like to show you some code of what I worked on last week. But before we proceed, I would like to warn you: these are experimental APIs. If you like use them in your app, like if you upgrade to Next Canary, they might or might not be there, or they might be renamed. So. These are strictly for your eyes only. Please don't type them into your computer. Or if you do, that's fine. But please don't quote me like three months later and like, hey, your code doesn't work. Um, so basically, these are subject to change. And they're still in active development. But this is consider this a sneak peek. So the work I've been doing is in pull request 12.39.4. It's called visiting the visit API okay, fast food. It's like I said, it has been merged into Canary two hours ago. So if you are really brave, you can look into that and maybe try that, perhaps. Um, so as it turns out, um, I have been talking about application and application instances. And like I said today, they're only used in fast food. 
and on the browser they're not like there's no really any uses for them yet. But as it turns out, the idea of being able to build many instances of um, your in, many instances of your app based on a skeleton or a prototype or a blueprint is actually useful in many other scenarios as well. So for example, testing, um, it would be great if instead of, let's go back to, um, right, so this is the API we have, right? Like we have today, the API is we have a global app and you can boot it once, exactly once, and then you can do some stuff to it and you can call reset to hopefully bring it back to the original state. But now that we have the concept of application and application instances, we can actually do something better. Um, we can, just like fast food, we can have um, in your browser, in your QUnit harness, you can load Ember and you can load your app into it and on the setup of every test, you can just put an instance and do stuff within, ins like within your test to poke at instance, do whatever, like navigate to different URLs, inject stuff in the container, whatever. And by the end of the test in your teardown step, you can simply destroy the instance and you don't have to worry about rolling back any state on the global app instance. And there are more use cases for the concept of instances. Um, for example, menu boot. So most of the time, you're probably working on um, a one true app that takes over an entire page. But perhaps you have a marketing website where you want to show off your app, but in that case, you don't actually want it to take over an entire page. You probably just want to restrict that into a tiny box on the marketing page that you can play around within the demo frame. So um, it turns out that the visit API is also a pretty good way to expose the, the primitive concept of application instances publicly. Um, so for example, on your marketing page, perhaps you can import your app file from your thing and then you can create an app and tell it to not automatically boot itself and you can point it to the demo page you have written and then render that into a specific root element on the page. And that's all using the same app that you have been working on. Or perhaps you can do multiple instances of your app on the same page. Perhaps you are making a multiplayer game and you want to add a split screen experience. Um, you can figure out how to do that within your app or, but perhaps you already have support for like network gaming, so you like your app already know how to handle multiplayer. So perhaps you can just render two copies of the app on the same page. Like you can, you can make one on the on the left side of screen, make one on the right side of screen, point them to the same game session, and then they know how to communicate with each other. Um, or perhaps you have widgets on your app. You have many widgets on your app. So perhaps you are um, New York Times where you have um, most of your page is server-side rendered, but occasionally you have some data visualization stuff on the page where you need something more, um, something more like Ember components to have your, help you organize your code. Um, so is Mitch here somewhere? Oh, he's there. Okay, so Mitch, uh, you should talk to him afterwards. He's been working on a project called Ember Islands, which solves exactly the same problem. Um, there are other people on the core team that um, is also working on something similar. Basically, the idea is to make it really easy to um, just render a few components on like contained area within your page. And turns out that application instance is a pretty good primitive for doing that. And perhaps, um, we can expose more of those use cases with the visit API. Um, you can go to pull requests, ah, there's one more use case. So perhaps you are someone like Intercom where you want to ship a script tag and let people put that script tag on 
the page um, and render like a in app chat thing on the on the same page obviously in that case you're not in the run true you're not in the one true app scenario you don't actually want to take over the entire DOM you just want to render a little uh, mini app that's embedded inside another app right so application instances are probably um, a good primitive to get us there as well um, we will see how far we can get with this so again the pull request is 12.39.4 and you can there are a lot of documentation in there so you can like again those APIs are subject to change but you can start looking at that and poking at it and give me some feedback and that's all I have prepared for you today and once again you can find me on the internets as Chen Gold and thank you very much. <laughs>